What's going on guys and welcome back to F122 for my team career mode season 3 round number 2 the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So we of course had a mechanical failure again last time in Bahrain. It was the MGUK that went on us this time. So um, yeah, gonna have to put the second one of those on the car because that one is completely goosed. So that's two Bahrain Grand Prix in a row that we've had a mechanical issue and haven't finished the race. We have to pick a new rival for um, the start of this season. Our options are Hamilton, Russell and Sainz, all drivers that I don't really think I'm going to be beating at the moment, but um, I'm going to go for Hamilton, Russell seems to be having pretty good form, Sainz in the Ferrari is way too far ahead for us, so um, we're going to go for Russell, but honestly I, I don't think we're going to be able to beat him because we're just not quick enough um, compared to those Mercedes just yet. On R&D, not a whole lot of change. Um, we're still right there with McLaren. No upgrades for us coming through. The only real change being Mercedes now a bit more ahead of Alpine um, for P3 in R&D. So um, we'll see how that correlates to um, pace on the track because Saudi's a very interesting one because it's a very quick track speed-wise. You need a fast car, but you also need a decent downforce car because, you know, you've got quick, but also some quite tight corners here. So... It's a bit of an interesting track in that regard, and last season we had an absolute rocket ship of a car, and we were very quick here because our car was just so quick in a straight line. Our speed through the corners wasn't as good, but um, yeah, all in all, we were very quick here. Unfortunately, we did have another DNF here last season. It was back-to-back -back DNFs, so I'm hoping not for that this season. We go pretty well in Q1. P3 at the end there. I actually went for an extra lap. Um after what I was expecting to do, and yeah, P3 in Q1, probably not where our car is actually going to be, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a good sign for the start of this session. As we go into Q2 now, uh, Lando Norris, might I add you, was also in the top 10, I think he was like P7, so a pretty good result from both of us here, with the potential of maybe both getting into Q3, um, or at least one of us getting into Q3, I hope that can be the case here. And Q2 here, I didn't feel like the car was quite as good, and my lap, time, my lap time I think was about 3 tenths slower than in Q1. I don't know what happened in Q1. It just seemed to have really good pace there. We end up P8 in Q2, but that does progress us through to Q3 for the first time this season. Norris, unfortunately, can only manage P13, so it's a bit more... It's a bit of a disappointment for him there, and just generally seems to be a bit of a downgrade in pace from Q1 for some reason, with both of us taking fairly similar steps backwards. Q3 though, and um, yeah, first time in Q3, so we're having a top 10 start for the first time in Season 3 in the second round, so that's that's good, that's a good, uh, good for things to come in the future. Um, and yeah, this track is a track that I do enjoy, I mean, it's a very tricky track, but if you get it right, it is massively rewarding. It just feels so good to nail a lap here, but it is quite difficult to do that. You run slightly wide through one corner, you go a bit too late on the brakes into a corner, and it can just... It, you can lose so much lap time when, you know, you, it doesn't feel like you're losing that much, but little issues like through that corner there, um, going a bit too deep into that one like I just did then, that can lose you a couple of tenths just in that corner, because it, you know, you go slow around that corner, and it also means you don't get as good of a run down this straight. This corner here, another one that is quite tricky. I get it pretty decent there. Not perfect, but relatively good. You want to be as close to that left wall as you can be to then get a good, as straight a run as you can through the next corner. And then it's just a big drag down this straight into the final hairpin. And then out of that corner, try and get a good exit. A little bit of a squirm that time around, but then down the front straight to finish off this lap. And to be honest, I seem to get slower every session. I think I pretty much match my Q2 time here in Q3. We end up P10. We've been beaten by Gasly, which is a bit unfortunate. I thought we could have beaten him, especially with the pace we showed earlier on. But it's P10 on the grid. That's not terrible on this track. Overtaking is possible. So let's see what can be done in the race. We're here today on the shores of the Red Sea in the lower Hejaz Mountains to visit one of the newest circuits in the Formula One calendar, Jeddah, home to what we all hope is going to be a thrilling Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So let's take a look at a topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. 
Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Stroll, Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Ricardo, Russell, Bottas, Gasly, and Shaw, Ocon, Albon, Lando Norris, and Sonoda, Joe, Latifi, Kevin Magnussen, and Mick Schumacher, Schwartzman, Tictum, Vettel, and Liam Lawson. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. All right, so P10 on the grid for us, fifth row of the grid, of course. Um, and yeah, I'm interested to see what we can do here in this race. There's definitely the, well, definitely the chance of points here for sure. I mean, we're starting in the points, so that's always got to be a good thing. But I think crucially, we've got to try and stick with the cars ahead. We've got to try and stick with some cars because once you lose DRS here, and you know you've got cars behind you with DRS you can really be slowed down um, so yeah I think we're gonna be wanting to make our way past Gasly as quickly as we can and um, yeah just see where we can go from there but here we go for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in season 3 of my team career mode F122 five red lights are out and away we go it is an okay initial getaway there for us but still not amazing we just can't seem to get the starts in this game Albon and Ocon having a look around the outside we actually bump into Bottas ahead a little bit there but I think we've gotten away with that no real damage Albon's managed to shove his way through we've managed to stay ahead of Ocon though but we're down to P11 at um, at the start here so we've lost the position Gasly is actually fighting with Bottas in the Alpha uh, in the McLaren sorry up ahead um, and we're kind of now just trying to stick with the cars up ahead struggling a little bit on these cold medium tires um, and a little bit of a gap as there always is we we just never seem to have a great start in this game just getting off the line is so difficult and then being able to stay with the cars ahead as well especially at a track like this is not easy so Ocon's actually looking around behind us he seems to have a lot of speed we for whatever reason do not seem to have a lot of straight line speed here I don't know what's going on because our speed in qualifying seemed pretty decent but we're having to defend very harshly against Ocon because for whatever reason, we just seem really slow in a straight line here, just absolutely shutting the door on him, making sure he can't get past, get as good of a run through that corner as we can. And as we go onto the back straight here, um, once again, just he's right up our gearbox. Actually, Latifi is there having a look at his teammate as well. As we come down here, for whatever reason, we are just so slow coming down that corner. We've already we're already outside of a second of Albon, but we have actually made a couple of tenths up into the braking zone of the final corner. As Charles Leclerc crosses the line, he leads from pole position on this first lap, and we continue on. Behind us, the two Alpines are fighting each other, Ocon and Latifi. Of course, Latifi joining Alpine this season not had a did not have a good Bahrain Grand Prix, um, but he's fighting here with his teammate at Saudi Arabia. He actually tries to make the move but in the end Ocon is going to just about keep the position he's definitely the faster of the two Alpine drivers but we'll see how that progresses up ahead of us Gasly has managed to get ahead of Bottas at the start but as they go into the final corner Gasly locks up a little bit and they come onto the front straight Gasly now behind Bottas DRS not available yet but it looks like Gasly still got a good run despite locking up into that final corner and he's going to have a look back on Bottas into turn one round the outside through the chicane very tight between these two good little battle here myself and Albon sniffing around in the background we are just about um, pulling away from the two Alpines as these two now go side by side through the next sector here Albon uh, Gasly trying to make this move stick but Bottas will keep the position for now but Gasly's not going to give this one up easily in that Alpha Tauri he's doing a very good job in that car 
considering it's not really, it shouldn't really be competing with the cars around us, as we, for whatever reason now, now that DRS is enabled, um, we seem to have a bit more straight line speed, and we can keep with the cars ahead, and are actually gaining on Albon using DRS and ERS. He has got DRS as well. We're going to switch to the inside, go for a bit of a dive up the inside into the final hairpin he gives us just about enough space but very very tight there and it's going to be a drag race now down the straight i think we both have drs coming down this front straight so it's a very even battle and that i'll be that out um williams sorry has a little bit more space than us in a, in a straight line but he turns into us in through turn one thankfully it's only wheel to wheel banging but yeah he literally just i was on the inside there completely on the inside and he just turned into us coming into turn one so thankfully no damage but um yeah a little bit silly from album there but we managed to get the position now back up into the points again at the front and the two Ferraris are dominating once again like they did in Bahrain. They're starting off the season very strong just like they did in season one. It is Leclerc leading the way at the moment from pole position with his teammate Carlos Sainz sniffing around behind. As the battle ahead of us with Albon, uh, with um, Gasly and Bottas, sorry, is still going on here as well. Bottas now trying to go round the outside of Gasly. He locks up a little bit into the final corner that lets us get a better run on him as we come down this main straight and Bottas doesn't actually have DRS here so that's going to mean our closing speed is rather good as we go to the outside though he's still going to be there on the inside we just try and keep it around the outside of him through the chicane and that is a beautiful little pass for us up now into P9 and now it is Pierre Gasly ahead of us, but as you can see, the gap to the cars ahead of us is massive now. Those guys, they're quicker than us generally anyway, and they've really managed to pull away with us fighting. As now, Carlos Sainz is trying to go for a move on his teammate, Charles Leclerc, round the outside of the final hairpin. That is a beautiful move, and I think he's got it done, because he's going to have DRS as they come down the front straight, and that is a great overtake from Sainz. He, of course, won last time out in Bahrain. He's trying to go for another win here and he's trying to start his season three like he did his season one with a kind of a dominant display at the start of that season as now we're on the back of Gasly we're going to go late switch to the inside like we did with Albon Gasly locks up into the final hairpin he turns back in a little bit of wheel banging between the two of us but we are going to come out ahead of that one and we've got DRS he does not and although like I said our straight line speed does not seem amazing um, Gasly manages to somewhat keep with us, but we just about pull ahead of him into turn one, take the racing line, go through the chicane, and we're now up into P8, but I think we're going to be fighting with Gasly and Bottas for a while, because we now have a massive gap to the cars ahead, so no DRS for us. The two Ferraris still battling it out at the front. Sainz got in front on the uh, previous lap. And now Leclerc is going to try and get the lead back once again. A better run out of the final corner and DRS for Leclerc means he goes to the inside going into turn one. And I think he might have got that move done not quite before the first corner. Sainz is going to still battle, uh, battle him for this one. But as you can see, the two Ferraris, they're actually losing a little bit of time to the cars behind now, but still have a fairly healthy lead now. Now Leclerc is back into the lead again. We come into the pits on lap 14 onto 15 for our set of hard compound tyres. Good pit stop from the team there. Nice quick one. And we're going to come out of the pits here as we come around the pit lane. Go a little bit wide out there. And then we get a big, big amount of, uh, of wheel spin on the back there. Nearly spin the car around, but just about managed to catch it. That could have ended in disaster. Next lap around, Bottas comes into the pits. Gasly came into the pits with us, and Bottas has just about managed to come out ahead of Gasly. They were pretty much side by side as he came out of the pits, but um, he would end up taking the position. Now though, um, well actually this is the same battle because I think Gasly managed to get himself back past again and now Bottas is once again trying to go for a move and the two, well no, the one Alpine of I think Ocon and Albon are now behind these two. So this is actually currently the battle for P9 and P10, so the last two points positions, it's now between Gasly, Bottas, uh, Ocon and Albon and then you've got Lando Norris, my teammate, just gaining on these guys in the background so this could become a five-way battle for the final points positions in this race. 
Um, towards the front of the grid, we've got this battle here, which is kind of the battle for, well, it's for fourth at the moment, I think. Stroll's in P4, then you've got Ricardo, Russell, and Hamilton. So these guys kind of just running in a bit of a DRS train at the moment. Not a whole lot of overtaking going on, apart from the two... Uh, the two races of Gasly and Bottas at the moment, but then a couple of laps later, Norris has now caught up to these guys. Albon has um, lost a bit of pace, and Norris has gone for a move on Alexander Albon. They're going to be side by side as they go down the front straight here, because like I said, that Williams, I don't even think he has DRS at the moment, but it's just a bloody quick car in a straight line. He's going to try and fight it into the first corner, round the second corner. Norris is just going to try and keep his foot in, and in the end, he will get that position on Albon, and now can chase after the cars ahead for a potential points finish in this race. For us, it got a little bit boring after that first pit stop. Um, I've now I've got quite a big lead, like a five second lead or something, on the cars behind because of them fighting. Uh, but then I've got like an eight to nine second gap to um, the, the cars ahead of Hamilton and Russell and we're just not catching those guys. We just cannot catch them because they're in a DRS train and they're just generally quicker cars than us anyway. So the rest of this race is going to be pretty boring for us, but thankfully there is still plenty of action with these guys because the battle between Gasly and Bottas has been a race-long battle here for these final two positions. Gasly goes to the outside of Bottas around the final corner, doesn't quite get it done there, but then Bottas has a terrible exit from the corner and that allows Gasly to get up ahead and this has actually now put Bottas under threat from Ocon and Ocon may even go for a move on Gasly as they go three wide into turn one on the final lap of the Grand Prix, Ocon trying to get into the points here, Norris is now right there in the background too, Gasly still comes out ahead somehow, Bottas in 10th and then it's Ocon and Norris so somehow the, the lead, the positions haven't actually changed with that whole battle and weirdly um, I don't know if Max Verstappen's got an issue but he's in third place at the moment and had a pretty big lead over Stroll and the cars behind but he's now been caught up by these guys but it won't matter um, Verstappen will come home P3 but only just with Stroll P4 then Ricardo, Russell and Hamilton this battle behind us still going on to the final corner here, Gasly Gasly looks like he's got P9 secured. Ocon, though, is trying to get Bottas for P10. He has a little look around the outside, but can't quite do anything there. And unless he can get a great run off this final corner, looks like Ocon will have to settle for P11. Bottas will get that P10. Norris, it's P12 for him, so unfortunately, no points for our teammate this race. But we will come through for P8, and we absolutely pushed as hard as we could on that final lap. And we will get the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, which I was not really expecting, but we just pushed like crazy that final final lap and um, yeah put in a great lap for fastest lap of the race that's an extra point for us five points coming our way driver of the day as well so yeah not too bad and that brings the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix to a close then as we reflect on the team's impressive performance today Anthony tell me what was it that helped them achieve this success I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament they were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix. And they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. So Carlos Sainz gets another race victory. It's two for two in season three for Sainz, and he mirrors what he did in season one. Of course, he was fighting for the championship all the way up until the final round when he got beaten by his teammate in season one, um, and it started very dominantly like this. So can he continue this dominance this season, or will he fall by the wayside in the second half of the season like he did in season one? We'll have to wait and see. It is one, once again a one-two for Ferrari with Leclerc in second. They do seem like the quickest car once again this season uh, Red Bull with Max Verstappen in third of course Red Bull was quite dominantly the quickest car last season um, well especially in Verstappen's hands um, but it looks like it may have gone back to uh, Ferrari again this year so it's interesting to see those two teams 
battle it out, but I would like a couple of other teams, maybe Mercedes and McLaren back up there again. Um, yeah, like I said, P8 for us with the fastest lap and P12 for Norris, so unfortunate that he couldn't score points here, mainly down to him losing quite a few positions at the start of the race. I think he fell back to like P15. In the Drivers' Championship, we are now P9 with those five points. Uh, Norris is P12. The two Mercedes move up to P6, uh, P6 and 7, so looking good for them. And in the Constructors, we are now P5, swapping with Alpine. Um, so yeah, that's looking good. Trying to make our way further up. Of course, we finished P6 in the Constructors last season, so P5 would be an improvement, but I really want to be fighting with those top teams, so let's see how we can upgrade the car, where we can get to, and hopefully sooner rather than later, we can get that illustrious first win. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.